Well, we're back again. <laughs> we had some problems. I hope we're coming through with somebody that loves us. Uh, let us know that we're coming through. It's kind of a weird night with the wind howling a little bit, so we want to make sure that we are here. We're excited because Jesus is here. Not only did we show up, I promise you he showed up. And uh, we're so excited to worship with you tonight. Um, you know, there is nothing like creating an atmosphere of worship to the Lord. And, you know, this place, the river, is just such a, a place of people have walked, I, I literally walked in the door and started to weep and said, I don't know what's happening here, but there is such peace, there is such joy. And why does that happen? Because, first of all, there is a praise in this place. And it's not just a praise when we get together. There is a praise toward Him. I don't know how many times a day I'll hear myself saying, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Father. And you know what? When we do that, when we create that atmosphere, any good thing can happen. And we're going to be praising the Lord tonight. We're so excited. One of our spiritual sons, Michael Korn, who's a cutie patootie, is here back here with us. When we were pastoring full-time, Michael uh, led worship a lot at the river. And he moved away, took himself a bride, Miss Tasha. And he's back in Nashville, and we are so excited. And you're going to be blessed. Be sure to share this with somebody. So you don't want to miss this because we're going to do some worshiping tonight with Michael. And it's going to be a blessing because he is, he is bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh. And we just love him so much. But let's pray. Father, in the midst of distraction... In the midst of all the confusion, things going on, Father, we focus. We set our face like a flint toward your face. We set our heart on purpose toward your heart. We will ascend the hill of the Lord. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands, pure hearts. And Lord, tonight our hands are clean, our hearts are pure because of the blood of Jesus. So tonight, we on purpose make the ascent we go through the gates of thanksgiving and we say thank you lord thank you for what you've already done thank you for all the times you've already healed us and touched us and blessed us thank you lord thank you for this day it's a day you've made and we have chosen to rejoice and be glad in it and lord we continue on through the courts of praise and we acknowledge all the amazing things you have done. You are worthy of all praise, of all honor, of all glory. And Father, we press into the holy place where we recognize your holiness, your wonder, your glory, and we worship you. But Father, tonight would we dare take a step into the most holy place to go in the place that we see what you see and we hear what you hear. It's not just this face-to-face, -face, but it is this face-to-face. -face. We see what God sees. And our minds are changed. Our hearts are renewed. Our spirit comes alive. And our flesh is reckoned dead so we can know you in a more intimate way. Father, touch the people tonight. Wherever they are, Lord, let your glory come down. Let your glory come down all across the world. Let your glory cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to praise you. To not just hear Michael as a person, but to hear him as an oracle of God that will lead us into a place of praise and worship and thanksgiving. Lord, we create an atmosphere where you are welcome. In the powerful name of Jesus, somebody say, Amen, Michael, lead us.
glory come down. Let the fire fall, let the wind blow. The glory come down. Let the fire fall, let the wind blow. The glory come down. Let the fire fall, let the wind blow. The glory come down. Let it fall. Let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall on us. Let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall on us. Singing, have your way, have your way, not my way. Have your way. physically that you were there yeah. thank you God that if we need healing in our minds in our hearts you are there we thank you for that Father you Now 
and we say, and, and I understand so many times it's at that place of, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. But tonight we can say, I believe. I may not have seen the full manifestation of it yet, but I believe. I still know you're my healer. I still know you're my portion. You're, every, you're all that I need. You're everything. You're more than enough for me. And I want us to sing that chorus one more time. If you're there, wherever you are, if you can just declare that with me by faith, you may say, well, I don't feel that at all. Well, sometimes my, my feelings will catch up to my declaration. Sometimes by just saying, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, suddenly that belief system of heaven starts rising up in me, and I really start feeling the feelings of faith. But first, let's make the declarations of faith. Can we do that? I believe.
friend during several doctor's visits and, and they were having a lot of physical challenges and they couldn't figure out what was wrong. But the minute, Michael, that we named it, the minute that they said, this is what you're fighting, I tell you, something came over me. I can't even explain it because, I mean, even in the doctor's office, I was wanting to yell, I know the name that's above that name. <laughs> I know the name that's above cancer. I know the name that's above AIDS. I know the name that's above whatever it is. I know the name. And it was like we'd almost been fighting this, my friend and I, this phantom thing. But once they said, this is, this is what it is. And we identified the enemy. I'm telling you what, I got so excited. You could have called it anything. It probably wouldn't have mattered because whatever it was, you know the it that you're facing whether it's financial problems, relational problems, mental illness, whatever it is, the it that can be named. We know the name that it's above it. Name above all names. You say, why do you worship so much? Because he's worthy. He's worthy of our worship. You don't know what I was. You don't know where he found me. I don't care if I was Buck and Dottie Rambo's daughter. You don't know where I was when he found me. Just because you got great parents doesn't mean you turn out great. And I went through some stuff. This boy over here at the piano, went, this kid went through some stuff. But can I tell you, Jesus met us where we were. He was, when I got to the end of, of myself, he was already there. Terry, we may need to write that. When I got to the end of myself, he was already there waiting on me. And not condemning and not judging, but standing there with arms wide open saying, come on, baby with you. I believe in you. I see the end from the beginning. I know what you are becoming in me. And can I tell you, some people say, well, I don't think all that's necessary. Well, maybe it's not for you. It's not necessary. When I've been away from Donnie for days, I don't run into his arms because it's necessary. I run into his arms because I love him. He has my heart. And so many times in moments like this, I don't have to. But there's something about me that says, I love you so much. I have to do something to let you know how much I appreciate you. I thought that I just want to bless you. Like even tonight when, when Michael and Tasha walked in, I just I just wanted to hold on to it for about a long, a long minute. <laughs> because I want to say, I'm so grateful God's brought you back around. Not that you were off in something bad. But you had to go to that journey to find that pretty wife of yours. I know that. But to come back to the place of, of being a psalmist and of being a writer. Tell me, I know something's on your heart. Go ahead and say it. No, um, it is. I, uh, it's interesting how sometimes in our journey, uh, God can tell us something that we already know in our spirit, you know, it's in there, it's like deep in there, but it's almost like uh, you have to find out for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You have to go and try some things, you have to go and do some things. And it's like you said, I mean, it's not like I went so far away. It's just um, when God births something inside of you, when God puts something in your spirit, something in your heart, and it's there and you know that it's there. Uh, it doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter what you do. You always know that. And he always brings you back to that place. And it's one of the things that you said to me a long time ago. It's like, follow peace. Whenever you don't know where to go, that's one of the things that has always stuck with me. If you're not sure what to do, if you're looking for God's will in your life, always follow peace. Always come back to that last sure word that God said. And if there's peace in your heart you'll find your way. Right. And so many times we try to find our identity in all these different things and all these different places and, and really find truly what God has called us to be. And the truth is, is that it's in there. Right. A psalmist is in there and it's always been in there. I never, 
I never questioned that, but I think in some time, sometimes you just, uh, you need to step away and gain a different perspective. Right. Does that make sense? Right. It does, absolutely. And some of you that are watching tonight, I really feel for you to pause for a minute and think about what is in you. Think about the divine purpose in your life. You know, God is so fair. He doesn't give me a bunch of gifts and say, Tim, sorry about that, dude. No gifts for you. No, he is given to every man gifts. I mean, they're, they're like jewels and gems. And some of us are going to step in the next dimension with a pocket full of gems that are still there. And wouldn't that be sad? I believe, though, that God is saying, look, look deep. What is, what is intrinsic? What is built into your DNA? And some of you may say, well, I tried and it just didn't work. Well, maybe it's time to try again. Maybe it's time for a second touch, or a third, or a fourteenth. Maybe it's time to dream again, to believe again. To know that God has a plan for you, and it's, it's a good plan. You know, some of us, we project terrible things. You know, most of you know that Donnie and I both this past year turned 65. I still have to go five, because it's so hard to say. <laughs> be honest, there were people that almost came to us like, well, y'all are y'all retiring? Honey, on the inside, I'm about 13. <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding? There are so many more things that God has promised. Do you have prophetic words? I may not, you may not label them prophetic words. I do. But things that have been spoken over you. Yeah. Things that you have known since you were a child. There was something there. But sometimes we get discouraged and things happen and life doesn't go as planned. But can I tell you, I really believe it's time to dream again. It may, it may manifest in a little bit different way. But can I tell you, tonight I, I sense the very finger of God. Stirring gifts. Breathing on purpose. To where that you can come alive with a fresh zeal and a fresh joy. You just never get tired trying to make stuff happen. I have. But sometimes when I'll just pause and sit back and just thank him for where I am on the journey, all of a sudden here it comes this. And all of a sudden, the dominoes start falling. And what seemed like it would never be, suddenly it's... And suddenly things fall into place. I keep hearing that sound tonight. I don't hear it very often, but I keep hearing the dominoes going. And I'm like, God, by your breath. It doesn't even take the finger of God. God can just... And things that have been lining up. Some of the things that you thought, well, these are terrible things. How can God use that? Can I tell you the reason I am who I am is not just the good things I've been through but the tough times I've walked through. The reason that sweet guy at the keyboard over there that I love so much, the reason he weeps so much when we worship is because of the dark nights of the soul when he was in jail for DUIs and, all, and drug dealing and all kinds of stuff. But some of those moments that seem so horrid, God has a way of turning it for our good. And things like that can make us people of compassion. People that will see others hurting and say, oh, I'll get in there with you. I'll, I'll get down in the ditch with you. I know what that's like, but I'm not going to just leave us both in the ditch. We're going to believe we're coming out of this. Some of you are fighting some tough stuff, some tough challenges. But the name above all names, the one who is the way, the one who is wisdom, the one who is provider, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Tzikhanu. He is all those names. He is our friend. He is our father. And tonight I just, I just, I just feel this. It's like a movement, a stirring. Ruth, are there some people that are that are sending us some things? And be sure and, and text us your prayer request. Carl, there's a whole bunch of people that need jobs. A whole bunch, a whole list of people needing jobs. Carl needs a job. Polly needs a job. Paul needs a job. A lot of people need jobs. You know what? God understands that. 
you know, the Bible says that if you don't work, you don't eat. And I understand some of you want to work, and it's not just physically eating. It's what it's the thing that we do with our hands, the things that we do with our minds that that bring sustenance to us, that that brings satisfaction to us, to our, that satisfies our spirit. So I'm just going to believe, and some of you are going to agree with me. We just say jobs, come in, the right jobs, the right pay, the right hours, the right benefits, the right circumstances. Right now in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you that everything lines up, the dominoes fall, and that job manifest in Jesus' name. Do you agree with me? I believe it. Roberta, her friend, uh, Barbie, is uh, battling cancer. Well, Barbie, we speak to you in the name of Jesus. We know the name that is above cancer. Many, many years ago, uh, I guess it was 33 years ago, they had, they had proof, they said, that I was filled with cancer. And went in to do surgery. No, it was, that wasn't 33, that was... 26 years ago, sorry. Um, but when I went in to, to have that surgery done, I mean, the, the, they had prepared everybody, so this is not going to be pretty. And I went in, and there were 27 tumors, but no cancer. Because we had believed together, and I'm not saying just because we believed that, but I'm telling you what, we had had faith that this was going to be the good report, because I knew I had things to do for the Lord. Yeah. And, I, and my life was nowhere near over. And so we went in, and Donnie said, well, whenever my doctor came out, she looked at him behind the mask, and she was grinning, and she said, Donnie, I don't know how to tell you. Yeah, there were tumors, but no cancer. And see, I don't know when the healing happened, but I know the preliminary report, everything said cancer. Everything did. Wow. But then God turned it. And some of my African-American friends said, he turned it. He turned it. And I believe God is turning some things for you. Barbie, I believe God is turning this for you and healing you of cancer. Angela, I'm still praying for you. I pray for you every day, Angela. A lot of sweet, sweet friends are watching. Karen's watching. Uh, a, whole, a whole bunch of our friends are watching tonight. And I'm glad you're watching, but what I need is your agreement. Your agreement that God is doing something wonderful for his people. And I just feel this. It's a, it's a sweet heaviness. You know, sometimes you get in service, you feel it heavy, and it's like, oh, the burden of the Lord. And it's like, but tonight I feel like a, I remember the first year Diane and I were married. We were married 36 years, and that was back when we did a lot of things that made money. He produced a lot of people. And I'll never forget our first winter together. He said, close your eyes. And I closed my eyes and all of a sudden I felt something heavy come on me and he bought me a mink coat and I mean it was awesome and the only mink coat like that we've ever bought but there was something about when he put that on me it was like it was oh it was awesome because it represented love it represented he'd gone out of his way it was wonderful and tonight it's kind of that same God is putting a fresh mantle on us that's what it is a mantle of love and a mantle of hope. I want you to just close your eyes and just, I just, what a strange service, but just close your eyes and by faith. Can you feel like when, when Joseph received that coat of many colors, and that's what we have, all of us. It's not just one-sided, it's not just one-dimensional, it's many colors. And Father, tonight I thank you that the coat that was within manifest upon them. And Father, tonight we sense the weight of your glory, the warmth of your presence. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That mantle represents that we have been chosen, that we are highly favored, that we are called. And some of us who have challenged even you, saying we're not qualified, we're not worthy, no, tonight we sense it, a subtleness in our spirit. That the cloak of God is upon us. The hand of the Lord is upon our head. The open yacht of God, the hand, the open hand of blessing. The hand of blessing that is infinite, eternal, without limit. And Father, tonight literally I feel the hand of God on my head. 
upon your people tonight, Lord. Calming fears, those who have been tormented by fear. The very hand of the Lord, like when a child has had a nightmare, but Daddy walks in the room and takes us in his arms and swaddles us and coos and whispers and sings. And peace comes. Father, I thank you that tonight the peace of the Lord that passes understanding comes. We will not fear because the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. so hard and so long that you miss the party? Did you ever plan a wedding, a shower, and there was all the preparation, all the stuff, and then when it was over, you go, what happened? I don't want us to miss the moment. I don't want us to miss the party. See, God is so present. The power of of the Lord is present to heal. You know, God is God is everywhere. We know that. But He's not manifesting everywhere. He's not doing a lot of stuff everywhere. But I just sense tonight there is a manifest, the many faceted glories of our God. And I want you to to take the moment. I, I want you to take it for yourself. So many times it's like, um, I remember when I was a little kid, we were in Colorado or somewhere, we went to one of those places and you could sit in the river and they'd say, you can pan for gold. You can sit right down here in this river and pan for gold. And I remember as a little girl, just I thought that was the coolest thing. And then they had some stuff in there and you, and whatever it was. But I feel like almost like tonight when we could just sit here and if you want something, take a minute, by faith, reach out and pay it for gold. The riches are in the glory. The riches are in the glory. Healing is in the glory. Everything you have need of is in the glory. And I appreciate it when you call and say, pray with me. We do that. We promise you that we do it and we do it many times. But there's nothing like you reaching out. Like the woman that had a whole bunch of issues. And she said, you know what? I'm going to press through here and I'm going to touch him for myself. And I sense tonight that some of you, if you would just reach out by faith and touch him. There's gold in this river. There's blessing in this river. Whatever you have need the riches, the riches, not the barely enough, the riches. Ask big, dream big. Because the riches are in the glory of God. I want to encourage you, even when when the, the Facebook Live is off, there are people that continue and go back over and over again and watch and read the text and pray. And there are people, I mean, I've got, I've got sweet little grandmas and sweet little partners. I can think of Lorraine and Sue. There's so many, Diane, that, that text me and say, I'm praying about this. What do you think about that? That are just so committed to this ministry of praying with you. But can I tell you, you can pray too. You can touch too. 
And why don't you do something really godly? Why don't you reach out and if you see names on that list and you see somebody that's got like Barbie that's got a need with cancer, take a minute while you're while you're paying for gold for yourself, reach out for somebody else. Because when you pray for others, you yourself are healed. Well, Donnie had a good word for tonight, but we didn't quite get there. Maybe next week we will. But I, I know something. When Michael starts leading us in worship, I mean, I'm just going to, I'm going to jump in over my head because I, that's just, that's what we do around here. But we love you. And um, if you want to know more about the ministry, you can go to streamintheriver.com. If you feel led to give to this ministry, we would sure appreciate it because we want you to know that you're not just giving to people, you're giving unto the Lord's work. And we appreciate it. Some of you say, well, can, can we get some some tapes, some CDs with some of the music? You can go to RamboMcGuire.com and you can get all kinds of good stuff. Michael, you got to come back and do this more often, buddy. I love you so much. I love you, too. Thank you for having me. You are awesome. And your, your mom and dad, Ed and Bertie, are watching up. They in, are watching. Where, where are they at now? In, they're in Denver. In Denver. That's they're right. Denver. Mile high. They're up in Denver. Hi, Ed and Bertie. Your boy did good tonight. <laughs> We are so happy to have him, and we love you. Is there anything else we need to do? I just we just kind of been flowing with this tonight. Anybody else? Oh, I want to mention that our sweet little Grace, her niece Olivia, uh, had surgery today, and the doctor. She's only how old is she, baby? Two. She's two, and uh, they're saying that she will probably need a colonos, not a colon, uh, a colostomy, the colostomy bag two years old so would you put Olivia she's so precious put Olivia at the top of your prayer list we have been praying and she came through the first surgery today but there are other procedures they're wanting to do but I believe God is moving in Olivia's life also we had a call today that our dear dear friends Russ and Kitty Walden many of you follow their ministry they're a great prophetic ministry uh, Kitty's 41-year-old daughter had a brain aneurysm today. Fell over no, dead. A few, days. a few days ago, sorry. A few days ago. We just found out about it today. But 41 years old. Our, our daughter Deanna's 40. Um, but Miss Kitty's daughter. Uh, and so would you lift up uh, Father's Heart Ministry, Russ and Kitty Walden? Would you lift up that family? They are strong in the Lord. But let me tell you, when a, when a child dies like that, it's just something unnatural about a child dying before a parent. So we just send comfort of Holy Spirit to Russ and Kitty and that whole family right now. And we love you. We just found out about this today, but Donnie's been talking to Russ. But I just want you to know that we bless you and uh, our hearts are with you. Any other requests, if you have them, just send them. Well, you just, this is one of those things you don't get. Did you ever go to Grandma's house and you don't want to leave because it's just the good? And there's still chicken legs on the table. <laughs> And you just keep going back and just, you know, it's like a big family reunion. When the Rambos have a family reunion, it's two hours to saying goodbye to everybody. Tonight, it's kind of like that. I just want to keep lingering with you. But know this, the Lord is there. Wherever you are, Patricia, I'm telling you tonight, the Lord is with you. You're not alone. So many friends. I'm getting to know y'all by name, honey. Uh, and so love you. But we're praying. Pray for us. We are seeking direction on some other things. So would you pray for Donnie and me and everybody that's connected with the river? Well, as we say around here, we love you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord.